Hello, and welcome to another Top 10. So when I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do with my next Top 10, I thought, hey, you went to music school for fucking almost four years, why not do a music Top 10? And I thought, what's my favorite soundtrack in a game? And then it dawned on me. It's Undertale. We're doing another Undertale Top 10. So, get ready for the top 10 songs in Undertale. Now, before I actually start, let me just say, no matter how analytical I try to be, music is subjective. So there's literally 0% chance, I'll say it right now, 0% chance that our list will be the same. And that's a good thing, so comment down below what your lists are, and don't like, WHY THE FUCK WAS THIS ON YOUR LIST? WHY WASN'T THIS ON YOUR LIST? WHY WASN'T THIS ON YOUR FAVORITE? IT'S MY FAVORITE! It should be- You get the point. Don't be that guy. No one wants you to be that guy. No one wants to be that guy. Don't be that guy. With all that bullshit out of the way, let's get into it. The top 10 songs from Undertale. Number 10. Your best nightmare. Where do I even begin with this shit show of a piece? The song sticks out from the rest of the soundtrack because just fucking listen to it. And it's fitting because when you fight Photoshop Flowey for the first time, it sticks out from every fucking thing in the game, and that's the point. This song fits the battle better than any other song in the game. Sure, if we were talking about the top 10 most listenable songs that you're gonna pop in your old disc man, walk it down the street whistling. <laughs> no, it's not fucking happening, it's not making that list. But this song makes this list because of just how fucking chaotic it is with the weird instrumentation, the chromatic notes all over the place. This song is just perfect for this battle. Number nine. The overworld themes. Now, I originally was going to do just like the battle themes, but I've seen like a couple of those lists. I didn't personally watch them because I don't like to copy people. But I wanted to change it up, and I really wanted to address something that no one really talks about, the overworld themes. Waterfall and the core being standouts in my mind. Now, I didn't really do any score study on these because they're very basic pieces, but that's perfect. They do exactly what they need to do. They're beautiful, they're simple, they're atmospheric, and they make you feel like you're in the area you're in. Waterfall, I get the feeling of a cavern with dripping water coming down from stalactites. Stalagmite. Tight. I can't remember which one's which. I'm too lazy to look it up. So, the point being, I really think people should talk about these songs more. They're all really well done, and I wanted to include them on my list to be fucking different. Number 8. Metal Crusher. So, on a Metaton's two themes, I went with Metal Crusher. Why? It's goddamn catchy, that's why! Oh, it has that upbeat feel to it and that added crunch because, oh my god, when I fucking went to do the score study in this piece, I got just bombarded with accidentals. Accidentals are sharps and flats, or if you're looking at a piano, the black keys. The more you know. Anyway, this piece is fucking littered with them. The piece is roughly an E-flat minor, I would say, but it's hard to tell because Toby throws fucking accidentals around because he fucking hates me! And when the song even begins to sound major-ish, he's using A major chord, which in E flat minor is a borrowed four chord from the E natural minor. What the fuck is this? Oh my god, that voice crack. This piece gave me a headache, and I'm not looking to do more homework. I fucking left school. I ain't doing that shit. Point is, it's jammy as fuck. Just listen to it. Just mmm. Mmm. Number seven. Spider Dance slash Dummy. I put these together because they all share a theme, and what's cool about it is how they use the theme differently. Dummy is a jazz tune, with the rhythms being swung, the walking bass line, it's just dirty jazz, and it's, mm, it's great. It's got that snap your fingers feel to it. No, not Little John. It's something you can carelessly dance to and just enjoy the music, you know, which is reflected in the boss battle with Mad Dummy, bouncing around the screen like a fucking psychopath. I love it. Then there's Spider Dance, where it's rhythmically straight, making it feel more precise. It's something you can dance to, but probably a choreographed dance or something more to a T, which is also reflected in the boss battle. Keeping you on the three lines the whole time and, you know, fucking, they're all dancing together and shit, you get the point. Now, what I wanted to talk about with this piece in particular 
is how fucking clever Toby Fox is. So, you know that old thing you did with syllables, like where you say your name, where, like, for me, it'd be like, Cloudy. Two syllables, two claps, right? So if you were to clap spider dance, but actually give spider dance and give them each the rhythmic value they should, you would clap it as spider dance. Spider dance. It's the fucking rhythm of the theme. Like, play it. Like that! That's so fucking clever! And that's why I had to include it on this list. Number six. Asgore slash Bergen, 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 God, this theme gives me chills. And the way it's presented in game, especially with the dialogue and the fucking cutscene that happens with it. And oh God, it's so fucking good. And when the music kicks in, and oh my God, oh, it's so good, so good. This song has a lot going on, which is really cool. There's a lot of rhythmic density, which makes it feel like a lot's happening, you know, it's kind of chaotic. And it uses a key like C-sharp minor, which adds all that sadness to it, because C-sharp is kind of like D-flat minor, and fucking, it's just, it's a sad sounding key, okay? This fucking sounds sad, but then it also sounds triumphant, and just, oh, it's so good, and it just perfectly fits what you're going through in that moment of the game. And oh, you can feel his heartbreaking. Speaking of heartbreak, here's a fun fact for all you nerds out there. And the nerdiest I'm gonna get in this video. So, I was trying to find some connection between Toriel's piece and Asgore's. So, when looking at Toriel's, I realized it was in D flat major. Could argue B flat minor, but I think it uses that more for the deceptive cadences. Again, I'm getting really fucking nerdy here. So, I would say it's in D flat major. Now, what I just said about Asgore's was it's in C sharp minor. Which, if you look on a fucking keyboard, C sharp, D flat, they're the same fucking note. The first note of both their, like, the keys they're in are the same note. Which is really fucking cool. And I don't know if Toby did that on purpose, but I think he did. And that's why the songs sound similar, not quite the same. Anyway, with all that said, Asgore is one of those tunes I can just fucking listen to all the time. It's so good. Number five. Heartache. Oh, look at that. Weren't we just talking about you? So, Toriel's theme was the first theme in this game that I just fucking binged. I love this melody. I know Flowey's theme is the one I said fits its battle the best, and I think Toriel's would then be the second. Because my god, every time I hear this, my heart just hurts. And if anyone's ever played this game, doing all of the routes, you know why. Oh, it's just, it's so cool. And it's actually a very complicated track. It's the only track in the game that's in triple meter because it's in 6-8. There's a lot going on in this track and it would take me a long time to explain. I'm not writing a theory paper for you guys. So just know that our goat mom got a great theme that actually makes you feel something. And it's hard for music to do that sometimes. So there you go. There's your fucking Ash theory paper. Number four. Bone Trousel. Slash. <laughs> now I can already see the goddamn comments. The Pyrus is my favorite oh, character in the game. The Pyrus is the Pyrus. Number four. No. No. Now let me tell you, I love this song. And my friend, Jake, who's been on the channel, check out some of our videos. It's been pretty funny. We fucking will put the metal version on by Rich IDB. More fucking, look at that. The whole screen should be fucking videos. Links everywhere. Fucking buy our shirts! And we fucking throw on that metal cover and we just fucking jam. This song is catchy. It's jammy. It's fun. It's playful. It's papyrus fucking materialized into a song. I don't know how Toby did it, but he found a way to get that like swashbuckling pirate villain, cheesy, harmless villain feel to it, you know? Like, he does, like, Papyrus wouldn't hurt a fly, but he, like, tries to be like, I am the great Papyrus! And that's, like, that literally, like, if you could put that voice and that fucking personality into a song, it would be Bone Trousel. It's great. And I was going to do some music theory on this song, but it's really fucking weird. And I'm really bad at music theory. God, why did I even waste my money in school? Number three. Hopes and dreams. Hey guys, adding this in quick while I'm editing, 
I referred to this track only as Hopes and Dreams. I forgot that it's Hopes and Dreams and Save the World. They get bunched together a lot and I kind of forgot to mention it. But I'm kind of referring to the combination more so than just Hopes and Dreams. So, yeah. Now, again with the comments. I, I addressed this at the beginning, but people are still going to bitch that their favorite songs aren't number one. And I understand that Hopes and Dreams is a fucking beautiful piece from top to bottom that goes really well with the, I put this in air quotations, fight that it goes with. It's a fucking interactive cutscene, which, I mean, is better than a normal cutscene, but still, it's not really a fight because you can't die, technically, whatever. I digress. Now, this song is fucking amazing. And it's really good that this song is so good because, yeah, it helps carry the emotions of the battle. This song just fills me with, oh god, what can I use? What word can I use that isn't determination? The feeling of willpower. Whatever. It just hits me, with the slow section being a standout in my opinion. With the strings and light piano, Toby nailed it with this piece. With the instrumentation, using different rhythmic texture, using different density in the orchestration to convey the different emotions of the piece and that triumphant build when all the instruments are going at the end. But it's all upbeat and there's drums and it's fucking awesome and every the screen's all whooshy whooshy red fucking rainbow motherfucker. it's great it's a great song it was done perfectly and it nails every emotion it was trying to hit number two battle against a true hero it breaks my heart that one of my favorite songs is locked behind a genocidal door but my god, do I fucking love this piece. Now, I've arranged this piece, and I can tell you, it shouldn't sound good. The way the rhythms line up in the piece, especially the first part, is insane. There's this weird 8th, 16th note in 3 beat thing happening with the echo effect of the piano at the beginning. And then the bass line is legit just fucking 16th notes flying around. And those polyrhythms work really well together with the fucking triplets that come in with the melody to give you this, like, insane rhythmic texture that makes you feel like you're in a battle it's chaotic but not out of control like your best nightmare it feels like this controlled chaos and it's so good and it gets your heart racing and wait i said melody and oh god let's talk about that melody if i could get sound tattooed onto my face it'd be this melody it's an F minor, which always has been a favorite key of mine. Yes, us music nerds have favorite keys. And it just sounds heroic, yet tragic. Epic, yet somber. And there's just this underlying feeling of hope that I don't know how Toby really pulled off in this F minor key. It's just, oh, and then when it goes into the 3-4 section and it feels like there's this time for reflection, and then it kicks in again and you're like, oh god, everything I've done is terrible. And it, uh, an untarged book, badass. She doesn't talk during this fight. That's another thing the one fight where the first monster just goes, no, fuck you. I'm not going to laugh. I'm not going to do shit. I'm just going to stand here, make a fucking thing about what you did, and listen to my jams. And jams they are. For this top ten, we're going to do some honorable mentions. Don't expect them all the time. I'll do them when I feel like it. Because fuck you. Alright, Sphere of Justice. It's a good song. It fits Undyne very well, but it's just not one I listen to often, and it doesn't have, like, the complexity of a, like, of like your best nightmare so it's just it's good but just didn't make the list death by glamour to be honest this song would have probably been at number 10 or 9 if uh i didn't want to include the overworld themes it's great the way the song just starts to layer on top of each other is so well done and it's honestly a really great song so just know death by glamour fans that it would have been on my list but i wanted to talk about the overworld songs and song that might play when you battle sands it's not technically in the game it's in the files but it's not in the game it's great it has like little pieces of bone trousel in it and like in the second melody that comes in and it lets you know that it's really connected to papyrus and like hey this probably stands as actual song but you don't ever get to hear it because well stands are fucking lazy and he's already gonna fucking fight you speaking of that let's move on to number one dog song oh yeah that's right this funny little dude is just good. No! It's fucking Megalovania. Yeah, it's fucking Megalovania. No, duh. 
This song is the obvious choice, but that's exactly why it's number one. In terms of like the techniques he used, the sound, the catchiness, and just overall sound quality, Megalovania is in its own fucking league. Look how goddamn popular it is. And I know, popular isn't always good. I'm gonna hear Justin Bieber. But this song is popular for a reason. It came from a fucking indie game. It's not like this was fucking like, Call of Duty, Modern Uncharted Warfare. This was an indie game and this song fucking exploded. And there's a reason a lot of people actually found out about the game. I know that. I've actually met people who knew about the song before the game. It's insane. And I know that this is the third version that Toby has done of the song, and it shows because it's the best. Each version has built on top of each other, and I don't think any of the other versions really would have taken off like this one did. You could tell that this was the completed idea Toby had for Megalovania. And the fact that you have to hear this song 50 to 100 times in the game when you play it, like, be real with yourself. I don't believe you if you said you beat Sans in less than five tries with flying. I don't believe you. So you've heard this song a fuck ton. And the fact that no one gets sick of it, I'm not fucking sick of it. I've heard this song so many goddamn times. I arranged it. I fucking played the game a bunch. I heard it a lot. And I still love this song. It is one of my favorite songs of all time. Now let me actually talk about some of the things Toby does. The fucking, I could just gush about like the blue scale usage that gives it that like chromatic feel that just makes it feel a little like, mm, just make it sound so goddamn good. Oh, it's so good. The different melodies and the way he stacks them on top of each other and just the rhythmic texture of the piece and all the off beats and oh, it's just so good. It proves that you don't need to go all out with music theory fucking, whoa, it's fucking all these bar chords and bullshit. No, you just make it a good goddamn song and look at that. It's a great song. It's not simple, but it's not complicated. It's that perfect mixture. And Megalovania is truly one of my favorite songs of all time. I'm going to sit here fucking gushing. So I'm going to leave it at that. Fucking Megalovania. If you don't think Megalovania is the best song in Undertale, you're wrong. I'm going to fight you about that. Well, that was fun. Thanks for watching my video. If you have any questions about the music theory, the brief amount of stuff I did go into, please feel free to ask. I'd love to answer some questions. If you have any suggestions for my next top 10, comment down below. I'd love to hear some ideas. Liking, sharing, subscribing, that stuff obviously helps and is always appreciated. Let's us know that you like the content we're making and lets me know to make more of these. So, yeah, thanks for watching, everybody.